This is about average speed as rate of change. Okay, a new phrase again is rate of change. So a unit rate is how much for one, and we've done that already. We talked about kilometers per hour. That's a unit rate. If you're going 100 kilometers per one hour, that that's a unit rate or a rate. Beats per minute if you're taking your heartbeat, that's a rate. So we're looking at rates um, for this lesson. This graph shows how the distance changes over time during a trip. So here is um, something we've talked about graphs in, the, in um, an earlier unit. We talked about looking at graphs. We also talked about how you would say something like, oh, this person went 300 kilometers and it took them four hours. Now we're going to take it a little bit further. We actually want to find out how fast this person is going. Okay, a rate. What is their rate? And when we talk about rate, we look at rise over run. So you can pick any two points on a line, as long as they're nice, clear points. And if I follow the example here, the rise is vertically how the line changes, and the run is how the line changes horizontally. So rise over run. If we look at that, that is going to give us the steepness of this line. Uh, which will tell us the slope of the line and that's going to give us the speed or the rate that this car is going. Rise over run, we, we often can just count squares. So this would be one, two, three, four squares. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you might say rise over run um, for this in this case that the rise is actually four. But what I always want you to do is to look over here at your scale. The top part of this line here is at 225 and the bottom part is at 75. So what you need to ask yourself is that is how the line has changed. It's gone from 75 up to 225. So 225 minus 75 is 150. So really this rise doesn't count as four squares, it counts as 150. It's 150 tall. The run um, the run is the horizontal distance. So when you hear the word rise, think of things like a sunrise or a high rise building. Rise is the vertical change and run, I guess you could think of somebody running down a flat road, that run is a horizontal change. So our run, we said it was 10 squares across, but what we have to look at is down below, what does that actually count for? And that's a change from going from 1 up to 3. And that is a difference of 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. So our, our rise over run here is 150 over 2. And what that actually tells us is that this person goes 150 kilometers in 2 hours. Remember back to unit rates? I didn't want to know how far they went in 2 hours. I want to know how far they go in one hour. So do you remember with unit rates that we just had to divide? And 150 divided by 2 is 75. So what that actually tells us is more than just how far they went or how long it took them, it tells us the rate at which they were traveling or the speed. So 75 is 75 kilometers per hour. That is their speed. That is their rate. The rise of a run is called the rate of change or the unit rate. Uh, it's a measure of the steepness of the line. The rate, cha rate of change tells you how many units to move up or down for every unit you move to the right on the graph. So the rate of change is of distance over time is the average speed. Rates are not always about speed. If you think of a, your heart rate, that's not a speed, that's beats per minute. But this, this lesson is just going to mostly be about speed. Please notice, if you have two graphs, and one graph looks like this, and the next graph looks like that, I'm hoping you'll remember maybe from what we've looked at before, that this line would, that means it's a faster rate. It would be a faster speed. The more steep it is, the faster they're going. I only have two examples to do. I'll try and keep this short. 
each rate of change. You are given lots of ordered pairs here on this line for the journey for a car. So we're looking at the car first. Um, look at all the information you're given on this graph. This is great. What I want to know is the rate of change. How much, what has changed when you look at these ordered pairs? So in a way that means going from 80 to 160, how much has that changed? Going from 1 up to 2, how much does that change? It's defined as rise over run. So if we pick two points, which two points? Let's pick this point and this point. If we draw our nice triangle in there, and we think about vertically how much this has changed. Okay, the rise this way, and the run would be down here. The rise, I know that this point here, I know it would be kind of hard to see on the graph. If I just get rid of that. See how this, this ordered pair here is not really on the corner? It's a little bit above, but it does tell us that that point is 160 tall. So our rise is between 160 and 80 and our run is between 1 and 2 so that part's easy. 1 to 2 is the run. The rise is from 80 up to 160 so that's a difference 80 plus 80 is 160 right so our, our rise is 80 so our, our rate of change is rise over run and our rise is 80 and our run, we said, counted as one. So that actually already is a speed, because that's 80 kilometers per one hour, or 80 kilometers an hour. So we're able to determine the rate of change, or the speed, for the car. The car is traveling 80 kilometers per hour. If we look at the cyclist, why don't we pick two different points? Let's pick these two points this time and we look at the difference here. We look at the rise over the run. It goes from 0 down here up to 30, so it must be 30 tall. So our rate equals rise over run and that rise is 30. How much does it change horizontally from here over to here? So it goes from one, zero, sorry, up to two. So the rate would be 30 over two. 30 over two is not exactly a speed. They're going 30 kilometers every two hours. And that's not normally what you would tell people. You would divide. 30 divided by two is 15. So that means they're going 15 kilometers every one hour. Cyclist is traveling. 15 kilometers per hour. It doesn't matter what two ordered pairs you choose and what two points you look at, as long as you can have some information about them and you're not guessing what the value is. Example two is about Natalie. Natalie skates six kilometers from downtown Ottawa to Dow's Lake along the Rideau Canal. It takes Natalie five minutes to skate one kilometer. So we already know that she's going one kilometer every five minutes. What I want to know is what is her speed. So the graph shows her distance from downtown. It starts at zero and goes up from there. And I want to know what the rise over the run is. So we could have picked other points. It doesn't matter which points you pick. Uh, points closer together might be easier. Points further apart, there's a little bit more calculation. But from vertically, from four down to one, that's a change. Four minus one, that's a jump of three. And from 5 to 20, it's like, how long is that? From 5 up to 20, that's 15 units across. So right now, what we know is that Natalie's rate is 3 over 15, rise over run. So rate equals rise over run, and that's 3 over 15. If we take 3 and divide it by 15, we get 0 decimal 2. So this graph, look at here, that's kilometers per minute. So right now, we know that Natalie goes 0 0.2 kilometers per 1 minute. That's her speed. That's her rate. 
And then it says, what is your average speed in kilometers per hour? Okay, we have it in kilometers per minute, which again is, sounds kind of like a weird speed. We don't usually give a speed in kilometers per minute. What we need to do is multiply by 60 because there are 60 minutes in an hour. So if I take 0 decimal 2 and I multiply it by 60, I get 12. That's 12 kilometers per hour, which makes more sense. She's skating down the canal, so she's going 12 kilometers per hour. That's her speed.